start? Okay. Now. Are we going now? Hello, uh, my name is Danny Kylo. It is September 11th, 2016, and it's 15 years uh, since the buildings fell. Uh, and I, I have a story to tell. Uh, back in 1992, I was uh, busted for growing a little bit of marijuana, and they used a thermal imager on my house at around at around 3:20 a.m. Of course, I was asleep at the time, and when they checked for a heat signature with the thermal imager on my house, they didn't even know nothing about me. They found two hot spots on my, the top of my roof. Well, with that, they done a weak surveillance, and they, they come in, and uh, I heard a big pounding on January 24th, 1992, and I thought it was my girlfriend's ex-boyfriend, who she said he was pretty crazy, you know, and they just broke up about a month ago. And I said, who is it? Who is it? And before uh, I could say that, my door got kicked in, and I just got out of the shower. And so I got a towel wrapped around me, and there must have been 20, 20 FBI agents, uh, women, men, mostly men, and they all had their 9 millimeters out pointed at me. And they said, down on the ground, get down on the ground. And so I got down on the ground, and uh, they wouldn't let me put nothing on. They just had that towel, and then they finally let me sit in a chair, and they did some uh, interrogation, and trying to get information that I never heard what they were uh, ever before. Like, uh, we know, uh, you know, an informant, and you're selling pot in Brookings for all places. And I go, no. I said, I want to talk to my attorney. Well, with that, you know, they hauled me off to jail. And I spent three, and they drove me to Portland from Florence, Oregon. It happened in Florence, Oregon. But anyway, uh, this ordeal was on a Friday, and... It was Super Bowl Sunday, uh, Super Bowl weekend, and Sunday was a Super Bowl, and you know, so I'm in jail for the Super Bowl, and supposedly I was going to get out on Monday if everything went right on my own recognizance. So uh, Monday came around and I got out, you know, my own recognizance. I was shackled from uh, wrist to ankles. You know, my mom was there crying. She said, oh, you know, you know, it looked like, yeah, I was like Charles Manson or something, you know. But anyway, uh, got, got out of there on my own recognizance, and I got a call from an attorney who looked at my uh, situation, and his name was Ken Lerner out of Portland. And uh, I was hoping, you know, I, I could get a good attorney. I didn't have the money to buy it, so this was a court-appointed attorney. And when I talked to Ken, Ken Lerner, uh, I call him Ken because he's a friend of mine now. Anyway, uh, he was just uh, ad libbed about my case. You know, they didn't have a search warrant. You know, for the thermal imager, and uh, we can probably we can fight this, Danny. And it just gave me a glimmer of hope. You know, and I was so happy to hear. You know, I got an attorney that he brought this uh, up about the thermal imager and not having a warrant, and I. I wouldn't have thought of that, you know, and I didn't know what a thermal imager was at the time. But it does detect heat, and it can see right through walls and see heat signatures, and that's what they did. They seen my two halides, Thousand Waters. I was living in a triplex in Florence. And, yeah, they seen them glowing from the outside, which the, your eye cannot see this. You know, it's naked to your eye. So it's like having x-ray vision, you know, and I, when my attorney started explaining this to me, I, I said, yeah, I said, you know, maybe we can beat this thing. I was looking at five and a half years, you know, it's not nothing, you know, federal prison, you know, that's a long time. I never done anything wrong in my life, and uh, so we wound up fighting this case, and it took ten years through many appeals, and it wound up to the United States Supreme Court which is the biggest court in the land in Washington, D.C. And I couldn't attend. I wish I could have, but uh, my attorney attended on my behalf. And he done a real good job, you know, and that was in February of uh, 2001. And then we had the waiting game, you know, and I said, well, how, what do you think? What do you think to Ken? And he goes, well, we just have to wait and see, Danny. He goes, I've done everything I could. Uh, 
they were sure drilling me on a few things, and I wanted to get a few things across. I didn't get across, but I done the best I could. And anyway, uh, six months passed, five, and it was June 11th, and it was in the morning. Uh, my dad answered the phone, and I was living in Florence at my mom's at the time. They took everything that I had when they busted into my house in January. Luckily, I haven't good parents. And, but anyway, my dad said, hey, your attorney's on the phone. Ken, and I jumped up thinking, God, please be good news. Please be good news. I've had so much bad news, you know. So I get on there and Ken said, we won, we won on a five to four decision with a swing vote at the end. And I am so happy. I just, you know, I instantly woke up from a dead sleep and I get this. And, he, and then he says, oh, and there's a radio station that wants to, out of Portland, that wants to do a uh, an interview. Do you want to do it? I said, sure. Are you going to be there? He goes, I'll be there too. We'll be on the phone. So we done that. You know, it was, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, NPR. Yeah. It's like, it goes all over the United States. But anyway, they were out of Portland. And so we done that interview and I was just on cloud nine, you know, and then I was getting calls, you know, the next day, you know, oh, uh, Tech TV out of San Francisco wants me on their show. They're not, no longer on, but they were like a tech uh, company, and I was pleased to do their show, and I'd done a great great show, me and my attorney, and I was on Kathleen Cryer Live, uh, I was on uh, CNN Nightline, and it was going great, you know, sky was the limit, I thought, and then, uh, well, that was uh, from June 11th, and I got an email around in August uh, of 2001, and it was from the New York Times, and I was just, you know, at first I didn't open it, and then I opened it, and, and the email said, uh, Hello, Mr. Kylo. Uh, uh, congratulations on your victory, and we looked over your website, and we like what we see, and would like to interview you and uh, do a story. And I said, wow, I said, I'd be honored, you know, the New York Times. So... Uh, we didn't set the date up quite. They said it'd get back to me in the first part of September. And so I'm waiting, you know, about another month. And the first part of September comes and I don't get no emails. And then I didn't get any. And here's September 11th in the morning. I get a call from my cousin. And I don't know if I answered it, but I think my mom did or my dad. I think my dad and my cousin says, did is Danny there? We're at war. We're at war. Turn your TVs on. And so we turned the TV on, and it was on every channel. They were talking about the World Trade Centers being hit. Well, that was three months to the day of me winning the Supreme Court, you know, June 11th, uh, September 11th. So that was pretty crazy, and uh, I was in shock when I seen this, you know. And uh, then I'm, I was just thinking, too, that's where I was going to be, go... They were going to fly me to New York, and I think uh, the, the New York Times office, if it's not right in one of the trade centers, it's real close, and that would have been, you know, where they bombed or where the buildings came down. I, I, many people heard bombs going off, so that's why I say bombs. And then the planes, you know, hit it, they say, and uh, a few people say they've seen the plane. Something fast hit it, uh, and the jet fuel melted uh the steel and compromised everything and it just pancaked both of them pancake 110 stories each of them just pancaked on one another on oh, the building seven it wasn't even hit by a plane and it was 47 stories i think built in 1983 well it wasn't that old and it just free fall i looked at it and they were talking about it uh, uh it already collapsed before it collapsed it was right in the background so they knew well in advance, I guess, that this Building 7 was going to collapse because of fire and debris from the Twin Towers. Well, anyway, when it finally did show it collapsing, it looked like a demolition free fall to me. And you can't tell me any different, you know. No uh, new building like that should come down. And so it had to have been preset with explosives, a demolition experts would do, and that would take weeks. And... If that, if they had the time to do that, because I think uh, Silver, Silverstein, Larry, the guy that uh, bought the World Trade Centers, uh, he's the one that said uh, they pulled it, you know, which it's a term for a blowing the, you know, demolition in a, a building. So if one was set up, all three 
were set up, you know, just the way they look to me. You know, that's my opinion. But uh, since 9-11, I, I still get many uh, calls from students in high school and college and emails. And uh, I found out that they're doing midterm and final exams on the Kylo case. And it's, it's pronounced Kylo, Kylo, not Kylo or Kilo. Now, a lot of you students out there are not pronouncing my name right, so I hope, I hope you can say it now. Kylo, Kylo. And, uh, but anyway, uh, they're doing midterm and finals in high schools and colleges all across the United States and even in Great Britain and around the world. And I think it's pretty cool, you know. And it is uh, fighting for our Fourth Amendment as we speak. And all this intrusion of our rights are being trampled on. Seems like one day after the next, Obama's signing another executive order. So uh, the Kylo case is there. You can look it up. It's Danny, D-A-N-N-Y, Lee, L-E-E, -E, Kylo, K-Y-L-L-O, dot com. And I got a website. And, and I was on uh, National Geographic. They contacted me in 2002, and they wanted to do a photo shoot on me, and I said, well, this is interesting, you know, and uh, so uh, when it come down to doing it, they wanted me to go talk to the people that are living in my old triplex that I'm no longer living in, and ask them if we can set lights up, me and my dad, and I can be his assistant. But anyway, it all worked out, and they, I went and talked to them, and they were all for it, and we had to go rent some halides, and we put two halides, halides where we had them, and then we had to go for him. Uh, his name was George Steinmetz from uh, National Geographic. Anyway, he wanted me to go rent some, uh, <clears throat> well, we rented the lights. Uh, you want to hit the pause on that, Dan? No. Well, anyway, so we had to go pick up everything and bring it back for him. And when they did shoot it, they used a $100,000 Phoenix thermal imager, which was the most highly advanced one. They got it from uh, a place in California, and they wouldn't leave it out of this guy's hand. He had to come down and watch it and run it. Indigo's was, it was called out of California. So they're using a $100,000 thermal imager on me, and I'm standing there next to the computer screen, and they got the glowing lights from the roof of my old house and yeah it was interesting it was uh really detailed here and it, it was in the november 2003 national geographic i i had a chance i guess to make the front cover but i didn't i made there was a centerfold part in there and it showed showed me next to the house i lived in in Florence, Oregon, and uh, yeah, it was, I, it was an honor to be in National Geographic. But uh, since then, I just, uh, I answer emails and uh, students around the country, high school or college, they all want to know different uh, answers to questions, and I, uh, I got a book that I wrote, and it's called, it's called Thermal Warning, Invasion of the Privacy Snatchers. And it's already, uh, I'm just uh, waiting for uh, the right opportunity. And I also, I wrote a poem book. And, and I wrote this poem in dedication to, to over 3,000 people that lost their lives in the trade centers and surrounding areas and all the firefighters and uh, ETMs and just people, police that lost their lives. You know, added up to over 3,000 people that were killed who's just trying to do their job or going to work. And I wrote this poem, and it goes like this. I know what I saw. The videos don't lie. The buildings come down like they were falling from the sky. It was like the world's biggest demolition, but instead they called it terrorism. It was part of their diabolical mission to try and put us all in submission. They don't care how many people they kill. All they want to do is to break our will. We have to hang in there until we win and put them on trial for all of their sin. And with that, I'm going to 
I'm going to leave you, and, you know, this is my first, uh, you know, I do have a poem book that's already wrote, and it's called Rhymes of the Times, 0809, and I got a, that's in it and many other poems. I probably got like 200 poems that I've wrote now, and it all has to do with current events, you know, I, you know, just things I see, and I, uh, I write some poems about them, so, hey, nice talking to you.